you frame off this bit. So you have um, HG satisfying this thing. You split H into its two parts. And let's say H2G satisfies P. Now you do update, so this is H2G prime. And you've got a G prime there, not hooking up with the G associated with R. You can, you can make this work, we can, we've done it, by having a structure such as this. This is the local bit, I'm allowed to change it. This is my knowledge of the whole of G, and I can change a bit of it. So now when I come back and come here, I take this off. Here, I've got H2, G, H2 that changes into um, H2 prime, G, H2 prime. And when I hook the R back on, this H2 prime is nothing to do with the H1, so you know that the H1 bit of the G, H2 prime has stayed the same. It's to do with, so this is giving um, old knowledge about the G plus the new knowledge about the bit that you're allowed to do. This one is conservative with respect to separation logic. The one I've given here is not conservative with respect to separation logic. But this one, when you're careful, seems to coalesce with the other one. Now what's it mean to be careful? But in the context of what we're doing here, what it means is that you've got to be really, really relative to the axioms that you're handling. And, for example, take this simple assignment. Why um, You're going to assign um, y to x. And beforehand, you don't know anything about x. Y has this back pointer thing consisting of s. It might actually not consist of um, ob and x, but afterwards it definitely will consist of ob and x. But this um, back pointer thing is from y, the pointers directly to y are in s, not direct, exact. So you can always increase this one. So I've just increased it early, as it were. To By doing this, you, you very simplify the axiom. And then you've got some axioms, so you certainly don't want two y's around the place. You can extend it, and also if you have additional knowledge, you can get rid of it. So you can be very... Uh, and with, we believe, we haven't done this bit, we believe, we do know that with this and the uh, first star, we're okay, we can get the results, bar those details that you only do it right at the last minute. Um... <laughs> um but we believe, question mark, that, that star one and star two converge when you're in the case that these things are making sense, i.e. you've got enough constraints on what's going on in the global situation to think about it locally. That's enough. Conclusions, I'll just be very quick. Even at this point, we were introducing stuff absolutely all the time, like the Seppish or the whatever. You know, we were in this new example, <coughs> and we got it to something looking pretty normal, but had to introduce a lot. What we're ha finding here, and I was trying to hint at it and showing you why I hadn't made it all beautiful and coalesced it all, is that we now have to go right back to the beginning, think about separation logic, what does it mean for that local global, what's the real well way to do it. I've given you the hints of it, <coughs> It's about this graph and thinking backwards and forwards. And if you have a pointer here and you swing it to pointer here, you're dealing with these three nodes. In fact, given what we did here, you didn't have to deal with this one because we had the, um, this could be bigger than it need be. So it's still this very, very local thing. And the other thing to say is th these two will join up. They are orthogonal. And we were finding ourselves needing the simpler version rather than absolutely the full blown version. And one day, it will all join up and be a better occasion than, but that's too far in the future to say for now. Thank you very much for listening. Or should I abuse my moderator privilege? Uh, I'll continue my question.
So I think the question I was really asking was, can you give intuition for, it was not, it was not really can you encode the, uh, the backward uh, oh, pointer okay. uh, assertion in terms of the forward one, but rather, why do you want the back, like, why is it important for an object to know all the things that it's pointing to? Because I want that, I want to say that untrusted code does not touch. Right, but in some sense it does, I mean, it is, it is able to touch in the sense of having read privileges, right? So I'm, I'm wondering how it's different from saying... It doesn't touch. It goes through that protector thing, and that protector thing has very strong conditions that yeah. I was sort of hinting at associated with... It touches that, but it really doesn't touch that in the sense that what are those... Um, Yeah, that's not. I, I guess, okay, let me rephrase it slightly. So when you, cre when you when on, on, the, on the code that you're verifying, which is not the untrusted code, it's the trusted code, you call the protect function at, some, at certain points. After you do that, why do you care about, tr why, why does that code care about tracking anything to do with uh, which pointers are coming in from the other side? Is it, is, or is it just that you're trying to verify the protector code itself, the blue box? So what so I was doing today was the protector code. Okay. From that, you can then say for, uh, this is intuition, I haven't done it. So for um, trusted code, that you can, uh, for arbitrary trusted code, you will never have those direct links from untrusted to trusted. And the reason why is because of how the protector is behaving. The protector is only giving you those certain um, uh, back pointers some of them are internal to you, uh, who you are. Some of them are police state, and police state has certain properties saying that you don't have the, you don't have immediate access. I can't think of um, that transitively because this one is blocking that, and I have to, I haven't given that. Sure. Away. Yeah. Yeah. No. I guess all I'm saying is, does the user code and the code on the left? need to even care. I mean, can't, can't all that stuff be sort of hidden in the implementation of protection and not exposed in ver when you're verifying the user code? Oh, uh, when you're verifying the user code, you don't, you don't need to care. Okay, so there you don't oh, need no, no. to use You don't code. need to care, but the point is you can, uh, you can prove a property of your system once and for all sure. that says if you're using these patterns, yeah. you won't have to care about untrusted hitting trusted. Okay. That's what I, that, what I was meaning. And then, so this guy can then quite happily work with this, just calling those functions with that protection around it. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a meta property about the system rather than the specific property of the particular trusted code that you're trying to um, specify. Right. And then so like this, all this global stuff, the, 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 all this sort of global complications of the model of the separation logic, that doesn't really, I can could, I could imagine that that doesn't need to affect the reasoning uh, on the left-hand side, right? That only affects this proof of the blue boxes. Probably. Okay. Yes. Right. But, also, uh, but, uh, but, but let me just flip that a sec, which is I actually want to do the exact opposite, which is I want to understand the combination of local and global reasoning and what does it mean to interface with different, for example, uh, you know, obvious global reasoning. The, the, oh, sure, you know, you'll, want, you'll so, want to verify more than just these Yeah, two so I actually think that our, uh, uh, you know, in this separation, you know, this graph separation logic world, I'm going to absolutely be going on to, right, I do want some form of, I don't know whether I call it um, HLS and G or what, or what else I call it, but, you know, I do want both these things because I want to understand how to tie it up both globally and locally. Right, so you were saying I want to think about trusted code without thinking globally at all. Well, I'm thinking, ah, okay, so here am I in this world of thinking locally. What actually does it mean to have many, many more people in the world think globally than locally and do good things with it? What does it mean to get the best of both worlds? You've got to have some integration. What, how, how do you do that? I have no idea. But that's yeah. why I ended so, up stuck in the sense of I, I didn't want to do this beautiful thing on SES yeah. uh, and the higher order with it because I ended up finding this thing which is rather interesting. That's yeah. yeah. Okay, so Francois, you, you raised. Okay. So that, now I will ask my question. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So, so, I mean, your conditions on this, this, I mean, the modified version of the actions for this global 
mean, handling this global uh, part of your model is, I mean, kind of makes me feel that in some sense you are doing some form of stability check. So, yeah, but so if you borrow some techniques from your work on concurrency, yeah, yeah. Yeah. then maybe. Yeah. And, and I'm, I mean, I have no idea about that, but you're completely right. And for example, everything about this has got views head on. Yeah? Yeah? And um, the, even, for example, right back at that beginning, that first slide on JavaScript logic, I was saying I borrowed this, not, not, this field is not in here thing. So I, I don't think of uh, sequential versus concurrent as, as very far off each other, actually. I mean, I, actually, everything we need in concurrent usually has something in sequential. So we have a question. What's your name? Gershom. Um, Hi. So uh, I'm sorry, this may be obvious or a dead end, or both obvious and a dead end, but as you were drawing the logic on the board and talking about looking at the pointers into something, right, it hit me that, well, if you squint a bit and pretend that you're drawing like the free graph of a category or something, right, um, then what you're actually talking about and then you're looking at the arrows into something, this is a Yoneda embedding. And we can talk about having oh. the code and how it very top, right? And then you that becomes something about man. the global and the local <laughs> and the relationship between the two. So I've just gone right back. I did my thesis in Edinburgh with <laughs> fabulous Gordon Plotkin. And his supervision style was five minutes in a corridor. <laughs> and so, for example, that's n completely not fair. We know. Um, <laughs> no, it's not, it's not the experience I have. <laughs> At least you were allowed to talk to him in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and one terrible day, I did some type, res type theory result, and he went chum 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 to Yunaida Lemma at me. It took me months to get your name to a level with my pieces. <laughs> Do I have to think about it again? So I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not correct, but it jumps right out at me since I've been looking at it. Can we do that offline, please? Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what I was, yeah, I'm a bit delighted to chat. <laughs> oh, okay, so now I will ask my question, which is, uh, um, so when you, when you showed these, uh, these uh, specifications for SES, like, it actually reminded me a lot of um, the proof of union finding that I did in my thesis. Absolutely, I was going to talk. I, I was wanting to talk to you afterwards, and if I'd only had more time, uh -huh. I would have re-gone through that so that I could have said something in my talk about. Ah, uh, well, so yeah. no, it's, it's just that maybe graph algorithms would give you, uh, yeah. like sort of a small test case rather. Yeah, than no, I'd love to. Yeah. Absolutely, definitely, yeah. uh, it's sort of definitely same ballpark. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, let's thank uh, all of our guests. Thank you. There is some one minor announcement, which is if you want coffee, uh, its coffee break will be will happen on the left hand side of this the registration desk. So there are many kind of empty places in this building. So don't get lost. Go to the <laughs> registration desk, turn left. Go straight and you will find a couple of <laughs> <Okay. laughs>